Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is Omni Talk Retail. I'm Ann Mazinga. And I'm Chris Walton. And we have a very special guest once again coming to you live from NRF 2024, the Vision Group booth number 5420. We have Pratiba Rajashekar, the vice, Senior Vice President of Automation and Innovation Stores and Supply Chain. Whoa. She's doing it all <laughs> Whoa. for Walmart. Welcome, it's so great to have you with us. Great to be here with you both. Um, yeah. So tell us about your background. Your yes. background is, I was reading it, I was scanning on LinkedIn, we were talking about it before we started. It's really interesting and varied. So tell us about your background and your role, because as Ed, we were just joking there, it's very expansive. Like there's a, quite a lot that's under your purview, so tell us about it. So I started with Walmart 13 years ago okay. in technology, and I've had the privilege of doing multiple things uh, with Walmart. I have led merchandising, I have done supply chain, I uh, did a, uh, lead our private brands and sourcing for Members Mark and transforming that brand and now lead Walmart US's stores and supply chain, automation innovation. So wow. anything that uh, is transforming how we do business, bending the cost serve, creating more capacity and continuing to delight customers through technology is under my purview. Nice. So that is... what. What's your background? I mean, how did you get into all of all of these categories yeah. and like what, did you do before what Walmart? interests you before yeah. Walmart I was a technologist okay okay I uh, have a master's in computer science but I also went and got MBA from Duke uh, and because I was very curious about how technology decisions were getting made they were getting made by business folks and mm -hmm. I wanted to be part of making those decisions and that's how I went and got my MBA and awesome. then started my career with Walmart. Awesome. At Fuqua, right? Fuqua, Fuqua Business School. Fuqua. Yes, that's yes. one of my favorite business schools to say. Um, yes. All right, so let me ask you this. So uh, I'm curious. I'm cu I have no idea how you're going to answer this question either. Automation versus innovation. What percentage of your job goes to each one of those? Or is it too hard to delineate? I think sometimes it's too hard to delineate. Yeah. The way I look at innovation is where my team is looking at current and new technology that, have, that solves problems for associates, customers, and the business. I talked about creating more capacity so we can serve more customers. I talked about bending the cost serve so we can continue to become efficient so our customers can live better. It's part of the core purpose of Walmart. And then also making sure that we integrate delightful experiences mm -hmm. with it, right? Both for our associates and customers. We're focused on customers and equally focused on associates. How to make their jobs easier. How to make their jobs better so they can continue to have not just a good job, but also grow within their career inside of Walmart. So you know how technology is evolving, everything that we do, so upskilling our associates and giving them more technological jobs allows them to continue to have a great career. Gotcha. So the customer that's and how, employee. Yes, yes. customer key. and associates mm -hmm. are key. Well, one of the big headlines to that point um, this year, or actually last year, Chris is, I yeah, believe it was, it was, like, it was, it was like April-ish, right? Yes, I think, yeah. but your, one of your headlines of the year last year for our retail awards show. Yes, it was. was that Walmart is deploying electronic shelf labels in over 500 stores. Yes. That's right. Yes. And so tell us a little bit about why 2023 was the year to start doing that, was yeah. the year to move forward on that. Yeah. I think you talk about uh, how the, our purpose and like the technology maturity come to life yeah. and yeah. the intersection of that. I think we found that sweet spot, mm -hmm. right? Technology maturity and our purpose of making sure our associates lives are getting better and yes. they're spending more time serving customers. So one of the beautiful things about electronic shelf labels is when we surveyed our associates, they said changing price labels it's, is a, I've done it. is it's, a it's, cruddy it's job. It's the worst yeah. job in the yes. store, so, actually. Yes. So I'd rather, we said, okay, yeah. what solutions can we bring? Because we want to be as accurate in, in our pricing for our customers, yeah. but also simplify those jobs for our associates. Right. That's why 2023 was like the year where we said, okay, we found the right technology through the right partner, right. and then we are, we, we not, we've tested it, and we have confidence that it can scale mm -hmm. at Walmart scale. 4,700 stores is not an easy job. No. Yeah. So we started with 50, then we said 500. We will continue to pilot and test. And if it delivers on 
both the customer and the associate value proposition, we will continue to scale. Some, and, oh, go ahead, I was Anne. just going to say, Pratiba, what are you hearing from your associates so far? They love it. Okay. What, what's what's it changing for yeah, them day to day? They love it because we don't have to print. They don't have to print price uh, labels. You don't have to like wait. They don't fall few, off. A few hours or like sometimes a day or so to like change price. Right. So they love that they're giving customers the best experience. Right. The, an, another thing with the technology, it has seven different LED lights, and we've integrated into like the the stocking and the picking Abby. app. Okay. okay. So. When, if you're a new associate, yeah. say you are in high school, you're working like your part-time job or you're, and you have to bring something from top shelf to, yeah. and st stack it down and make sure that anything that's low in stock to be available yeah. for customers, it will tell you exactly where to stock it, right? right? If you are like picking yeah. for your digital orders, it will tell you exactly, if you don't know where the, where the item is, and you can ask for help within the app, it will right. flash the light so you right. can go find the item. So it's actually simplifying how our associates shop for customers, how they make products available for customers, and be more accurate with pricing. So all of this delights yeah. our customers. It's really good to hear that that's actually what's happening. Because yeah. we see that in the pitch, yeah. but it's really good to hear yeah. from your mouth that that's... The yeah, which is so key, which is, which is what I was going to ask you too, because there's the, there's the, the, there's the traditional use case, right, of, of it saves the saves the employees time. They don't have to put up prices. But there's all these other values that are coming from the deployment and understanding how they work in the stores, like pick to light, essentially what you're talking yeah. about. And when you have employees that are new to the job or changing over a lot in their jobs, that's just a, just such an important thing to make them better, more proficient, and happier at the end yeah. of the day too, which exactly. is what you're getting at, right? Yes. Because in the 52 stores we've piloted, we have 250,000 unique users, associates. I mean, unique users. Right, going through every going day. Going through right? it every wow. day. Wow. Yeah. So that shows you the scale at which we're looking at yes. this. That's a really great point. Yeah. Wow, I'm glad you said that. Um, all right, so let's shift gears, Ann. I'm ready. We've been waiting for this one. Yes. Drones. Yes. A lot in the media last week. You guys roll, are expanding them in Texas, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Drones. So we, we've got we've had some questions about this on our show. So we want to get your sense of this. Like, where are drones now? And like. How long before we see them become, a, will we ever see them become a meaningful part of the operation? And if so, like how long is it going to take? Drones are here today. They're not yeah. the future. Uh, I think people talk about drones like they're the future. They're here today. We operate in six states, 31 hubs. Uh, and in Dallas alone, we have 11 hubs with drone up and two with wing. And customers are adopting. Okay. Um, the thing about last uh, week's announcement is we are now able to reach a greater population. 75% of the Dallas-Fort Worth metro hmm. will have access to drone delivery. Mm -hmm. That's 1.8 million households in 30 different cities. That's huge. Right. So the way we think about any solution, whether it's drone or any other solution, is how is it solving a customer problem? Customers told us that they want some deliveries to happen with less than 30 minutes. Okay. So drone solves that. And that's what you're using them for, really? Yes. It's like really quick delivery? Quick delivery. So does the customer even see Does the customer even see that? Or is, is, it, is it just like an option on the PD, product detail page and they get their product delivered via drone? Like how does yeah. that work? Break that down for the yeah. audience. Today you have to go to the partner's website. They have to deliver the, deliver okay. the app and like look at products that are available. Okay. But in a few months, a few months. In a few months, we'll be integrating that into the Walmart app. Wow. So 75% of the 120,000 items in a super center are eligible for drone delivery. Wow. So that is not novelty. That is real. And so will I still have to elect drone delivery in a couple months, or will it just, ha will it just default to whatever delivery so method I want that, that works for Walmart? Not all hubs will come live at the same time, okay. right? We said yeah. in the next year, we will have 75% of the population covered. So has, as we like launch these hubs, based on where you are, and if you're covered within the radius yeah. of the drone delivery, Yes, you will have drone delivery as one of the options. So it'll be an option. It's an option. Explicitly so today you have option. scheduled delivery, we have express delivery, wow. we have delivery wow. for less than one mile. Now it will be drone delivery for less than one mile. We're road tripping minutes. to Texas, and in a couple well, months we're yes. road tripping. I, I'm curious to, I mean, uh, so over a million houses have access to, we'll have, the, access. Will have access to the service. Yes. What, what do you think, 
Like, is it is it waiting for them to see it on the PDP to really start to see utilization reach that higher point, or is it are are there people already engaged right now? Like, oh. what does it look like now, and where do you think like consumer adoption is going to go? Yeah, I, uh, we have in one of the the hubs in Frisco. Yeah. One Sunday, a couple of weeks ago, we saw 130 deliveries. Okay. In one day. Wow. One day. Right. That was drone delivery. So right. that is huge. So you guys are, yeah, no, you're it's putting not, this in a new perspective for me. Yeah. This is really interesting. It's not just yeah. a novelty anymore. Yeah. Right. We've seen repeat purchases. We've seen people use it for their problem solving. In their, uh, like, I'm a traveling mom. Yeah. I have a busy life. So when my child says, Mom, I don't have anything for dinner and drone delivery is there, I can be like, okay, I can order something from Walmart for you. Right. Just put it in the microwave and then you're all set. Right. right. So I've heard like customer stories where moms have ordered dinner for their like children mm -hmm. and when uh, they're running late or traveling for work. Right. I've heard moms saying, oh, I needed a pine alarm or I forgot something sure. to, yeah. uh, to pick up something from. A typical short, short like I need it like, now. Yeah, we heard the head right helper was like yes, the biggest item order or something. I need it now, I yeah. have a three month old, I really can't take it, or a six month old, I really don't want, don't want to like go to the store. Sure. And I want it immediately, right. right? So all of those things, Wow, a real so, problem so we're crazy. solving wow, for it's really, customers. Really great to hear this because like, you know, some of the ESLs, it's like you guys are really testing this mm -hmm. to understand its scalability and you're going very quickly. It sounds like, not very quickly, but very soon, I should say, that's the right word, yeah. very soon into that next phase of yes. testing for scale when it shows up on the product yeah. detail page. So that's awesome. Wow, cool. What else are you looking into? So, I yeah, mean, what else is like, on the radar? This is, that Chris and I were just like, drones, this will happen yeah. eventually. And now you're changing our, our thoughts on that. What, what other technologies are you here exploring? Yeah. Um, like just in the stores, we're using augmented reality. So yeah, Chris, John mentioned that too, so yes. yeah, how? Yeah, we, uh, you said you have worked in retail, yes, right? Yes, we both so have, you yes. You both yes. have worked in retail, so you know how uh, difficult it is sometimes to find an item in the back room. You uh, know it's yes. somewhere there, but you know you're running uh, running out of stock or you're low in stock and customers really love this item and you spend a lot of time looking for that item. So we're using augmented reality to, it's so easy. You just open up your app, you like face it to the, uh, so to the boxes. an employee app has an An employee you app, just put, yeah, okay. just, uh, you just look, uh, face it to the box mm -hmm. and it will show you a green plus mark and you can say, oh, this okay. is a box that I need to pick yeah. because we are running low in stock and we want this product to be available. Mm -hmm. And the data is all seamlessly connected in the background that keeps track of where the items are. Is it on the shelf? Is it on top shelf? Or is it, is it in the back room? And it directs our associates to either downstack from the shop, top shelf or go to the back room, like just hold your phone across all the brown boxes and it will tell you exactly which brown box to pick. Yeah. I would have loved that. That's a great use case too. I would have loved that as a DTL too, as a district manager to go in and be like, okay, let me audit this too <laughs> and see what's right. Like it helps with the yeah. auditing too and right. the, yes. the making sure that everything works correctly. Wow. Well, and it helps with, the, you know, the onboarding of the new I didn't know associates you guys doing and the younger yes. first time associates, yes. I imagine, yes. too, right. to be able to see that that visual confirmation, yeah. green or red, right yeah. away. You don't have to read the complex label anymore. Yeah. It's right. so simplified. Right. It's a green. This is a green mark. You just pick that box, and right. it will tell you exactly yeah. where that right. box. Or like scan wow. the barcode. Like where's the barcode? You know, <laughs> yeah. like you don't have to yeah. do that. But you you pick that box. You scan the barcode, and then you go on the sales floor. You say, "Help me! I don't know where to stock it." And the ESO flight lights flash. You stock it right Jesus. there. Wow. All right. So. Okay, I'm, I'm like so flat. I'm like so mind blown right now. Okay, so so all right, now you're at NRF. Yeah. What else? What's the next thing you're gonna? What what's what gets you really excited from a technology perspective in the realm of what we talked about? So we talked about drones, AR, ESLs. Like, what are you excited about from the next evolution standpoint yeah. here at the show to evaluate and learn more about? I'm a technologist, but I'm also a person that <laughs> is centered around people. Yes. Okay. So what really excites me is solutions that solve for making people's lives better, whether it's our associates or customers. Yeah. So I have an open mind of looking at technologies and saying, what will really work? How will it integrate with existing solutions? And how will, how will we continue to evolve the value proposition we bring 
for like all our stakeholders. Yeah. And there, but there's nothing in particular that you're very keen on seeing. No. It's just that broad. All it's right. that okay. broad. All right. Yes. All right. All right. All right. All right. I I would like to work with you because I feel uh, like yeah. you have a very open mind. You're like. And you really do You're doing cool stuff. A good job of bringing the physical, the human, and the digital elements of retail together. I I want to close in just asking you, what are those foundational elements that you think are so important to building the smart stores that your team at Walmart has done so well? Yeah, and the, I have to say, we are on the journey. Okay. Right to we, are, I think we will always be on the journey. We we'll always be on, yes. on the journey of yeah. like bringing solutions to customers and we know customers always give us really good feedback mm -hmm. whether it's our checkout experience whether it's our price accuracy whether it's like product availability and we will continue to evolve how we think about all of that and how we simplify it so it's like make the value proposition all a huge part of the value proposition is also simplification how we okay. simplify it for both customers and associates. So that's so kind that's, of your benchmark every day. Yes, like, am, I simplifying, simplifying. am I simplifying? Am I simplifying? Am I simplifying? Am I removing friction? And at the end, delighting. Delighting them. Every time they check out digitally or like check yeah. out physically, they say, wow, this was the best shopping trip I had with Walmart. I'm, I'm curious. I have one more question for you. Yes. That just You just made me think. How do you scorecard your job? Like your job is really unique. Like yeah. there aren't that many, you know, like executives in charge of automation and innovation, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you scorecard? How do you know you're doing well? Like, uh, we have really big programs that yeah. we're implementing, mm -hmm. and we have real metrics: customer metrics, associate okay. metrics, productivity metrics. So, so at those kinds we of look at all of those kinds of things to make sure that it's not technology for the sake of technology; yeah. it's technology that's driving back and aiming towards probably simplification yes. as defined by Simplif work it takes to yes. do, time it takes to do things. That kind and of it's thing. the culture. Mm -hmm. at Walmart is to listen to our customers and associates and we constantly listen. We never feel like we've arrived and I actually value that so much yeah. because you learn so much throughout the journey and it helps us stay focused on what is really important. It's our people. Yeah. And I also want to say that people and planet and communities, mm -hmm. right? right? We stay focused on all three of those because one of the other things that we're also focused on is how are we thinking of AVEV and how are we being like focused on regeneration. Mm -hmm. So when you ask me the question about technology, the yeah. reason I didn't say there was one or two is because there are multitudes of things that right. we have to solve. Right. For. It's kind of a silly question when you get right down to it because yes. there's so much you have to keep, so many balls you have to keep in the air. Yeah. What saying. Wow. Yeah. Well, All right, Ann. Well, Martin, but this man, was, this, was this awesome. has been so enlightening, I have to say, and really, I think, cements Chris and, Chris's maybe, I won't speak for you, but in my opinion, that Walmart has really my, uh, been yeah. transformational for Walmart. Yeah. in so many ways these next couple of years. We're so excited to keep following the work that you and your team are doing, and thank you so much for your time today and for sharing that with our audience. Absolutely, um, it was so fun. Yeah, good, well, this was my first time, great, but I yeah, really no, no. Oh, thank That's you. That's what we try to do. We try parts. to make it very comfortable yes. for all the executives we interview, and thanks again for giving us your time. It was really appreciated. Yes, thank you Thanks guys. so much to all of you who've been following along with our coverage. We still have another interview to come here later today. Uh, thanks again to the Vision Group for making all of this coverage from NRF possible for us. You can come stop by and see Chris. You can see me. You can see the Vision Group in booth 5420. And until then, be careful out there.